Hey what's up guys welcome to MB Tech Talker my name is Matt in this video I want to show you how I generate a certificate using Microsoft certificate services installed on my Windows 2016 lab server which will then allow me to secure all web based management sessions to the Palo Alto Networks firewalls web UI. I don't know about you guys but I hate it when I get those really annoying your connection is not private warning pages well in this video we're going to get rid of them once and for all. The process I'm going to use involves completing a new certificate signing request or a CSR on the certificate services server but first I have to generate a CSR from the PanOS firewall. So let's log on to the file and get things started. Okay so I've logged into the firewall. So straight away you'll notice we've got a certificate error when we go to 192.168.21.21 it's saying that there's no valid certificate so what we need to do is go to the device tab and then we go to certificates you can see we've got three certificates already configured on the firewall this is from when I did the SSL decryption video so we have a root CA which which is from the Active Directory Certificate Authority and then we have the trusted cert and the untrusted cert. If you haven't seen this video, I suggest you go and watch it. It's um, something that I recommend seeing uh, sooner rather than rather than later. Um, I'll put a card up above and I'll put some in the description. So for this video, we are going to generate a new certificate and we're going to give it a intuitive name. So we're going to call it Web UI. firewall management the common name is going to be an a record which I set up for the management interface so in this case it's WS VM 50 FW01 MGMT and then the fully qualified which is NB tech dot local the sign by is going to be set to external authority so that's going to be the, the certificate authority server or the CA server so that I don't have to configure multiple certificates um, I'm going to use the certificate attributes down here so I'm going to click add um, and I'm going to put in host name we'll take the fully qualified domain name first and add that into the value then we're going to add another host name and um, we'll copy and paste that in again but we'll remove the MB tech local so essentially that'll be the host name of the firewall and then thirdly we'll put in the IP address so the management address of the firewall which is 192.168.21.21 so essentially when we have finished doing the configuration and we've got valid certificates we should be able to use any one of these values so these subject alternative names or SANS and put them into a browser um, we won't get a certificate error so that means we don't have to put in the, the fully qualified domain name every time we want to connect to the Palo Alto firewalls web UI so if we hit generate and that successfully generate the certificate key pair so as you can see we've got a pending certificate request so a pending certificate signing request and we're going to take we're going to export this off the firewall and then we're going to copy the contents into the Microsoft certificate server uh, and generate a, a new certificate and then import it back in so we need to tick the box go down to the toolbar and click export certificate and then we're going to save it and then we're going to open the folder and you can see it's a dot CSR so dot certificate sign in request if we open that up and we need to copy all the contents of the file 
and then we need to go over to the Microsoft Active Directory Certificate Services server. You can see I've uh, gone to the IP address. Um, I'm logged in as an administrator, which is which is a, something that I found is a bit quirky. That I need to be make sure make sure that one, I'm using an administrator account, and two, that you're using the HTTPS. So what we're going to do is select a task which is request a certificate, and then we're going to do a submit an advanced certificate request, and then we're going to submit a certificate request by using base64 encoded and we're going to paste in the contents into the saved request box make sure there's no spaces and in the certificate template i'm going to use subordinate certification authority and then i'm going to click submit and then we're going to check the base64 because the firewall supports base64 encoded and then we're going to simply download the certificate save it and then open the folder so it's just named cert new so as long as you've only got that one downloaded on your machine, then you'll know what it's called and you can come back to that in a second. So what we now do is go back to the firewall and this time we're going to import. Um, you've got to make sure that the certificate matches the name of the original request. So I normally just copy and paste this. Um, so uh, import certificate name browse to the file that we just downloaded the signed certificate cert new dot sir open and then click OK so as you can see we've got a, a valid certificate now and it's underneath the root CA so we've got a, a chain of trust here so all that's left to do now is to create a SSL TLS service profile so that the certificate can be tethered to the firewalls management settings. So we achieve that by going to um, the SSL TLS service profile and then we're going to click add. Then we're going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this web UI management cert SP short for service profile and then we're going to choose our newly signed certificate which is this web UI firewall management and then I'm just going to leave that at default and then click OK so next thing we need to attach the profile to the management settings so if it's still on the device tab we go over to setup And then underneath the general settings, click the gear icon. And what we're looking for is the SSL TLS series profile. So that should now be there and available. So we click that and then we click OK. And finally, all we need to do is hit the commit button. As you can see, we get a little message here saying the web server will be restarted upon a successful commit of the configuration. Please refresh your browser window. So let's do that. Okay, so that's looking good. You can see we haven't got a certificate error anymore. So we view the certificate. And you can see this certification path. So we've got a chain of trust now. The certificate is valid, which is good. So let's just open up another tab and let's try the other other names. So HTTPS and then let's use the host name. So that was uh, WSVM50 hyphen FW01. Oh no, it wasn't my mistake is hyphen management uh, and there you go we've got a, a valid certificate and also we try the fully qualified as well which is HTTPS WS VM 50 FW01 management 
but with the mbtech.local on the end. And there we go. That's also a valid certificate. So as you can see, that's been successful. We've got three ways of logging into the firewall by using one certificate. So that's been a successful lab. So I'm happy with that. Um, I hope you find this useful and I will see you on the next video. Thanks. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.